Mr. Barton. I didn't realise that you were back. How did you get on in London? Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Mackay. I met a most interesting young man called Bertie Murrow. He is starting a job as a newspaper reporter for the Scotsman uh, sometime in the new year. So he has nowhere to stay in Edinburgh, so I thought it would be a good idea if perhaps he were to come and stay here until that time. And I also thought, why not bring Christmas back with us and have an English Christmas up here? What do you think of that? Well, I really don't know what to think. I, I, I don't know what that will entail, and I, I think Christmas is only about two weeks away. <laughs> we are experts here at entertaining. Now, what I was thinking is we would have the traditional uh, Christmas type of things, you know, like um, Christmas food. Uh, we must have a Christmas tree. Well, I I'm sure Alexander will help if he can, but he's busy outside in the garden. If he comes up here, I hope he doesn't get mud on our clean carpets. You know, the mates and I will have more than enough to do without that. Mm. Well, I think I'd better go and clear this with William. I take it he's in the study, is he? Right, I'll go and see him. There you are. You will never guess what Mr. Barton has just told me. He's invited some young man to come and stay for the Christmas weekend with us. And not only that, he has said that he has promised him a Christmas with all the trimmings, just as he would have known in London. Does he not think we've got enough work to do? These young lassies up the stairs, all their heads are full of the Huckmany dance at the Cram and Kirk. What am I going to do? I'm sure you'll cope. After all, you're such a wonderful cook. And, you know, the girls, they might quite like it too. Now, I'll have to think about the food. We should have a roast and I think I'll make some vegetable soup. I'm sure Alexander saved some of the vegetables from the garden. What do you think we should have for dessert? Well, I think I could make a clouty dumpling. I could also maybe do a bit of shortbread. That always goes down well. This is going to entail a lot of work for me and I'm not getting any younger. I, I feel exactly the same, but we have no choice. We have to do as we're told. And I'm sure it will all be good in the end. Now, let's think. I had better go and make a list and then I have to find Alexander because Mr. Barton wants to speak to him something about a tree. I think I'd better go and look and I'll speak to you later. Well, William, I really think you should have spoken to uh, Margaret and myself before inviting the, this young man. Uh, I really don't hold the idea of uh, celebrating Christmas Day in that fashion. Uh, of course, I usually work on Christmas Day, uh, although since it is a Sunday this year, that's uh, not a concern. But uh, I trust Mr. Morrow will be accompanying us to church in the morning. I suppose we could have a, a slightly more lavish meal than usual, uh, though it will be extra work for the staff. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. I've talked to Mrs Mackay already, and she says there'll be no problem. Oh, and by the way, I've got a special extra treat. I have ordered four tickets for the King's Theatre on Boxing Day. Oh, uh, what will we be going to see? The pantomime. Mother Hubbard. It'll be fun. A pantomime? Oh, I don't really hold with that sort of thing. Well, I suppose since you've invited your guest and bought the tickets, we'll uh, just have to go along with it. Think of it this way. You'll be able to show off by driving the Lancia up to the theatre. Oh, it'll be great fun. Alexander! 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 
Alexander! Ah, oh, Margaret, there you are. I take it you've heard about your brother's latest idea. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. And, you know, I'm actually looking forward to it. Oh, it'll brighten up these long, dark December days. Do you remember when we went to London a few years ago, the Garland's Hotel? Remember, we all enjoyed that, and, oh, the hotel was so beautifully decorated. Ah, uh, well, yes, you, you may be right, uh, but uh, I'm concerned it'd make a lot of extra work for the staff. You know, we could give them some extra hours off at, uh, at Hogney. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> After all, I don't want to end up looking like that uh, Mr Scrooge in uh, Charles Dickens' story. <laughs> a Christmas Carol. Yes, well, I really enjoyed that book. Yes. Do you know, I wonder if celebrating Christmas as a family will ever become popular here in Scotland. Mr. Barton, you were looking for me. Yes, Alexander, I was, about time too. Now, you may well have heard about my plans for Christmas. I was wondering if you could uh, find a suitable tree to be a Christmas tree. A, a Christmas tree? And it would have to be about, oh, uh, six, seven foot tall, and, and you maybe put it in a pot. Um, I can't think of anything offhand, but I'll take one of the lads and we'll have a look. And I'll see what I can do. Good man. Oh, and um, don't forget the mistletoe. Oh, look, William. Look how beautifully Tamar has decorated this tree. Alexander brought it in from the grounds this morning. Oh, look how festive it is. It really cheers you up. Well, I suppose you're right, uh, sir. Prince Albert may have had a good idea, after all, of bringing in the, uh, the concept of a Christmas tree. But uh, what are these uh, toys doing underneath the tree? Uh, these are toys that I collected from friends at church, and tomorrow Tamar is going to deliver them to some of the some of the needier families in the village. Oh, that's a very good idea. It's always, always uh, good to be generous to those less fortunate than ourselves. And look, William, m more of these Christmas cards arrived at lunchtime in the post. Oh, they're so lovely and it's such a good idea to send these cards and keep in touch with friends and family at this time of the year. Mm. Uh, there seem to be a remarkable number of innovations for Christmas this year. Uh, just earlier, uh, William was talking about these things called Christmas crackers that are going to be on the table. They are indeed and they're such good fun. I saw them in Kennington and Jenner's last time I was there and I felt we just had to have them. Oh, I I do hope Mr Murrow won't be disappointed with his Christmas here at Lorison because it's not really the kind of Christmas that he's used to. Well, they should be arriving any time soon, actually. It could be in now. I'll not speak to him just now because I must go and speak to Mrs Mackay about my outfit for the theatre, but I will see him later. Mr. Murrow? Mrs. Mackay, I presume. Indeed. Please do come in. Now, Mr. Barton is waiting for you just up those stairs. Bertie, th this is your Ruba. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Well, what a, uh, what an interesting room, William. You know, I must say, you and your sister and brother-in-law have really made Lauriston Castle your home. Such a treat to spend Christmas in a genuine Scottish castle. <laughs> yes, we're very lucky, yes. A very historic building. I I'm sure we will bore you with the details later on in the day. 
Well, you might have noticed there is a slight chill in the room, so I've had a word with Mrs Mackay, and she's going to have a fire set. After all, we wouldn't want you to be cold, Bertie. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I have come prepared with the correct clothes for a Scottish winter. I, you know, I've heard it said there's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they arrive, there's a closet over here you can put them in. Thank you, William. And should you need to, there is a small toilet outside which you could use. Um, one of the advantages of being a plumber and having a plumbing business is that we've been able to install brand new plumbing in the house along with the central heating. Anyway, I hope you will be comfortable here and look forward to seeing you downstairs later on for afternoon tea. Thank so, you, William. Goodbye, Barty. Oh, Annie, you've looked it out already. Oh, it's just perfect, thank you. We're going to the theatre, the King's Theatre, to see a pantomime. Mother Hubbard, oh. my brother's idea. Apparently they've put a pantomime on every Christmas since they opened four years ago. Maybe become one of our new Christmas traditions, who knows? Well, I'm glad you're happy with your dress. But I think it's going to be very cold for you on Monday. I think I'd better go and look out your hat and, and maybe your fur coat. Well, yes, my, my brother has booked a box, so oh. I really do want to look my best, but I do want to be warm. Well, I'll go and look out those things now. Oh, and Annie, um, you know I bought Will a, a camera for Christmas. Yes. I'd be grateful if you could maybe wrap it in some way. I know just the right piece of material. I'll just go and get that for you. Oh, thanks. I knew I could rely on you. Thank you. Oh, it's good to sit down for a minute. I've been fair rushed off my feet. That Mr. Barton and his falderal ideas. Oh, I know what you mean. He's had me training all over the estate looking for a tree. And that's easier said than done, believe me. And of course, Mrs. Mackay watching me all the time to see if I've got mud on my boots. Cheek of it. And I ask you, what is the point of a Christmas tree? Waste of a good tree, if you ask me. I agree. Those young lasses upstairs have spent more time decorating that tree than they have getting on with their work. I wonder what Mr Murrow will think of my clouty dumpling tomorrow. I found a nice clout to wrap it up in. A clout? Aye, Alexander, a clout, a big piece of material, and I get all the ingredients and I shove them all in and I tie it up and I steam it for hours. I'll tell you what, I'll maybe make a nice jug of custard to go with it. Well, one good thing, the indoor staff will all get a taste of it as well. Will you still be coming up for a wee drama on Hogmanay? You can be our first footer if you wish. Yes, I'll be there. And I'll bring a piece of coal for luck. Well, I'd better get on with my work. No peace for the wicked. Mr Barton wants some holly for the hall, so I'd better take it up to him now. I'll get one too, and I'll get Tamar to take that tree up the stairs. Thanks for the tea. Ah, William. I just want to thank you for your kind hospitality. I very much look forward to spending Christmas with you and your family. Yes. Well, uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, they have retired uh, for the night, but they said they will see you in the morning when we go to church. I, uh, I bought some champagne with me from London. I thought we could use it to celebrate my first Scottish Christmas. And my first English one. <laughs> well, here's to a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year.